My name is Dean McNeil, and I play the trumpet. I play the trumpet in the Saskatoon Jazz Orchestra, in the Saskatoon Symphony Orchestra, and I teach brass and jazz-related courses at the University of Saskatchewan. I want to make a very short video for you today to talk a little bit about a situation that I've often been in, and that's where I'm sitting at home and I want to practice my instrument, but I can't make too much noise for a variety of reasons. The first thing we need to realize is that we don't use the muscles in our face for anything else other than playing a brass instrument. So that means we need to play a brass instrument a little bit every single day. Even 15 minutes of brass playing a day is far better for you than one or two hour long sessions throughout the week and then not touching your instrument any time in between. So how do we do that if we're not allowed to make uh, a lot of sound? Well, one of the things you can do is you can use this thing called the PEAT, the P-E-T-E. -E. And I'll put a link at the bottom of this video here to show you uh, what it is and where you can get it. It's basically this little apparatus that you put in between your teeth and your lips. And when you hold the disc there and then you pull it this way, so that is pulling it very, very slightly this way, and you try to hold it back with your lips, that um, approximates in very similar ways to playing a brass instrument the way that the muscles need to work. It's not quite the same as practicing, but it's pretty darn close. I've used the peat many times when I haven't been able to get to my instrument for whatever reason, and it's really a, a lifesaver. You don't even need to go buy that. You can just take a, a button about the size of the mouthpiece on the trumpet, about, about that big, and just put a piece of string in, uh, or th a thread in the button, put the button between your teeth and your lips, and then again, just pull it slightly and very gently away from you for about 10 seconds. And if you did that probably uh, 10 times, that's amazing how much that can help your brass playing kind of stay, the lips stay in shape a little bit. So I would highly recommend that. One of the big advantages that we have though as a brass player is all the sound comes out the end of the bell. It's not like a clarinet where the sound is coming out all kinds of holes or a saxophone or a violin coming out the F holes. So this particular mute is called a best brass mute and I really like this one. I'm not here to sell you on any particular type of mute but I found that this best brass uh, practice mute is a really great uh, mute that you can play and I'll, again I'll put a link at the bottom to show you, um, uh, show you where you can get it. So, if I put my mute in and just play a few notes. Like I'm pretty playing pretty loud there and you can almost barely hear it. You can get a lot done. You can practice your scales, your slurs, you can learn new repertoire, uh, you can practice tonguing, you can get a lot done with this. A mute is a really great practice companion for an improviser because you keep the horn on your face a little bit longer when you're playing with the mute to get more done when you're practicing. There are other mutes uh, that you can use and uh, there's actually a great link to making your own practice mute for about two bucks. Uh, it's not quite as good as the best brass mute but it's pretty darn close. So I'll put the link to, to that little video about how to make a practice mute at the bottom of this video as well. And then there's other mutes that you can also use. Um, most uh, trumpet players, and I would say trombonists, I'm not so sure about French horn and tuba and euphonium, but most trumpet players and trombone players will have a straight mute, a cup mute, a harmon mute, and a plunger mute. So one of the things that you can do is you can take your cup mute, stick a sock in the, uh, in the cup part of the cup mute, and when you put it in the bell, put it really tightly in there, and um, that really dampens the sound a lot as well. You can also take your Harmon mute and take the stem out and just play with the Harmon uh, mute in and that also really, really reduces the sound. Whenever you use any of the mutes, make sure not to play too loud. Don't try to get the mute to, to make the same type of volume. You don't need to go out and uh, spend a lot of money on a new mute uh, or a fancy mute to get something done on the trumpet. So another thing that you can try doing, and I'd caution you not to do too much of this, is you can do what's called free buzzing. So when I take the instrument away and I just play with my lips uh, freely, that's kind of an approximation of what I do when I play the instrument. It's not quite the same, to be honest. If I played like that on the trumpet, it would sound kind of funny. 
but it does use that same muscles in the same kind of way. So um, I think all of the brass players, I think it's safe to say we all do a little bit of fluttering to get the uh, muscles uh, loose and oxygenated. You can even hold half of your face and try to get the flutter to happen all the way back here. So it's as loose as possible. That gets some blood flowing in there. And then you can try just making a sound by bringing the lips together. When you do that, make sure not to roll the lips in and don't tuck the bottom lip up inside the top lip. You definitely don't want to do that to try to make a sound. So that's something you can do if you're, um, I would say, a trumpet player for sure. Again, I don't know if, if free buzzing is the greatest thing to do for trombones, French horns, tubas, and euphonium. And then, of course, doing a little bit of mouthpiece buzzing is also something you can do. Keep in mind that when free buzzing or playing the mouthpiece, it's a little bit different than actually playing the trumpet. And I actually can't play the trumpet very loud right now because there's someone sleeping in my house. But if I put my mute in and I buzz, an actual different note will come out. But if I, I'm playing in kind of a relaxed way with my lips apart a little bit, So the buzz starts when I connect the trumpet to the mouthpiece. So if I manufacture a buzz, if I manufacture a buzz, and I, and I stick it in here, I'm probably doing it slightly differently. So it's great as an exercise and as a warm up and as a, an alignment activity to do some free buzzing or mouthpiece buzzing. Just be careful not to transfer that exact experience onto the trumpet because again, it's slightly different. Another thing you can do, this is a, a, a trick that a wonderful uh, jazz musician and trumpet uh, pedagogue named Bobby Shu taught me, that if you take your, your two fingers and you kind of hold it up around the distance of the lead pipe, and you touch it very gently to your top lip, that also helps a little bit. So those are some things that you can try doing. Now, playing with the, with the um, mute out, that's probably the best thing that you could do. Um, but again, if you can't do that, certainly practicing with a mute is better, far better than not practicing at all. And let's talk a little bit about not practicing. There's a saying that goes, argue your limitations and sure enough they're yours. So in other words, I'm of the opinion that there are ways to get good at an instrument in less than ideal circumstances but people often like to find excuses not to practice their instrument. And one could be, I can't play, somebody's sleeping. So what do we do? Well, I found that a little bit of creative thinking will help go a long way. Necessity is the mother of invention. So I've practiced in uh, cars. I've gone and practiced in garages. Uh, maybe there's a mechanical room in the building that you're in that you can go and do some playing and not bother anybody. You don't need an incredibly inspiring space to get things done. You just need to be inspired to want to improve on your instrument. But there's another exercise that you can do, which, again, uh, it doesn't take the place of practicing, but it can really help you get a long way, and that's entitled wind patterns. So when you're doing a wind pattern, you're literally pretending to play the instrument. So if I play with my mute, a C major scale, now I'll do a wind pattern where I'm playing that scale. When you're doing a wind pattern, you're literally trying to pretend that you're playing that instrument. And by doing that, you're making all kinds of interesting and valuable associative relationships in your mind between hearing music thinking music, doing the blowing, doing the tonguing, and matching the tonguing up with the fingerings. So if I did something a little bit, um, let's say there's a, a tricky piece of music. This is from the Arvin's book. And let's say I wanted to do that as a wind pattern. Or 
let's say I wanted to tongue it. Right? So I'm practicing this and I'm trying to get the blow to sound nice and warm. I don't want a cool sounding airstream. I want where the end of one note touches the beginning of the next note and the tongue is getting out of the way so we have lots of air flowing over the lips. So using a peat practice aid, doing some free buzzing or buzzing like this or with the mouthpiece, certainly using a practice mute, you can get an enormous amount done in a very short period of time. And then when you get an opportunity to play without your mute, either by yourself or in a group setting, you're going to be in great shape, literally, and great shape uh, musically inside your head to uh, join back in in the fun. So I hope this has been useful to you. If you have any questions, you can send me an email at deanmcneil.com, and happy practicing.